guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Casey, and this week on Adapted Adventures, we're gonna be talking about my new chair, the process I had to go through to get it, and some of the new features that I like about it. So last time when Andrea and I were posting, one of my last videos was that I was getting a new wheelchair. And I didn't have it at the time, uh, but I do have it now. I've had it for about a year and a half. Uh, and I just wanted to talk about the process first of, of what I went through to get the chair. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the features that I really like about our, on the new chair. So I originally got my chair, I got fitted in like June or July of 2019. And then they built, inspected out, and then it was delivered to me in October of 2019. Uh, however, unfortunately, um, as you guys may know, I was going from a different, or from, I used to perf push Performax wheelchairs, and this is my first tie light. Um, so there, when I got the new chair, it wasn't quite fitting right. And I tried some adjustments, but it just wasn't working. Uh, so I actually had to send that original one back, get refitted, and then I finally got the final, this one that you see here, in I think it was March of 2020. So it ended up being a longer process than normal. There were a couple hiccups along the way, uh, one with insurance and then one obviously with the chair not fitting. Uh, actually what had happened is that we made it too short front to back. And so whenever I would lean or transfer, it would it was really tippy to the front. And we tried adjusting back upholstery and all sorts of things, and it just wasn't enough. Um, and with me knowing I wanted to keep the chair for a long time, it wasn't worth it for me to try to mitigate that. So we ended up just starting from scratch. Um, but we got, on the second time around, we got measurements perfect, uh, I really think. And this chair has been great for me. I've, I've loved it so far. I've had it, I've had this chair in like for a good year and a half, uh, and it's been really good for me. So now I just kind of want to talk about some of the new things with this chair that have been different from my old ones uh, and why I like them and why I chose them. So this chair is the Tie Light ZR. Uh, Tie Light is owned by Permobile now. Uh, but they make great chairs. The biggest uh, difference between this chair and all my other chairs that I've ever had is that this one is, the frame is uh, titanium. So uh, Tie Light does offer a couple of different um, kind of like levels of the titanium where you can get everything, including like caster forks and your camber bar and everything made out of titanium uh, all the way down to like your axles. Uh, I didn't go the full titanium. The frame, my frame is titanium but everything else is aluminum. But uh, admittedly, and I think Andrea could attest to this too, uh, just having the frame titanium is soup, it makes a quite a big difference in weight. Um, and because I transfer when I'm going to work and on my own, and I'm transferring and pulling my chair in and out of the car on my own, uh, you know, 90% of the time, it does save a lot for me and feels better on my shoulders and feels more comfortable. So that's the biggest thing, the frame is titanium. Uh, you can also see probably here too, it's not painted. Uh, it's just, they call it brushed titanium, I think. And I really like that as well because you don't have to deal with uh, chip paints coming out or paint chipping off after you know a year of, of wear and tear. It makes the chair look a lot cleaner and, and you know more professional and things like that where it doesn't look banged up as much. Um, the next big thing that I did on this chair that I haven't done before is fendered side guards. So as you can see, the side guards have a little bit of a lip on the top. Uh, I struggle a lot with like tearing, um, like tearing up jeans and, and my shorts on the sides and my hips. And also like in the winter time up here in Minnesota, or if it rains, uh, getting mud and dirt and water on your, on your legs uh, and on your clothing. So these have been really, really nice. I haven't had any issues with that. Um, I went gone through a winter now and a spring with these side guards uh, and they really have been great and I really like them. Um, I also, <laughs> I hadn't had brakes on a chair for probably 10 years and I finally did get brakes on this. Um, and I was like worried about scratching up thumbs and having extra weight on them. But these scissor brakes that I got are actually really nice. They're composite, so they're nice and light. They're not made out of metal and they, they slide underneath my wheels, um, or excuse me, underneath the frame. So I'm never worried about catching my thumbs on them. Um, and that's the other, I guess one thing I did have to get used to though, is that all my life I've been so used to pushing by grabbing the, the tire and the hand rim at the same time. But with the new fendered, uh, fendered side guards, I can't get my hand under there anymore. So I do mainly just push on the hand rims now, which is a little bit of a different feel and it's a little bit getting, it took some time getting used to. There were times in my, when I first got it in the first couple of months that I'd skin my thumbs up just because out of instinct I'd grab the whole wheel and then you catch yourself on the, on the 
side guard, but I'm over that now. I don't have any more scratches. So, so I'm talking about the brakes again too. Um, like I said, I haven't had brakes on a chair for my previous two chairs. So getting putting them back on has been admittedly nice. Like I think I used to not have them on, like again, because I thought it was going to be too heavy or whatever. I didn't need them, but um, they really have come in helpful with with keeping my chair stable while I'm working out at the gym or cooking here in the kitchen. Uh, when I need to stay put, when I'm trying to chop something or or do something at the stove. So they really have been helpful. Um, I really like these because it's just one lever. You push it back and it locks in and then you push them forward uh, and they pop off. Um, and if I have them set right, uh, that's pretty easy to go. But yet they still hold my wheels uh, in place where I need them to be. Uh, the next thing that uh, it's not, it's just Tylet's design, which I really, uh, really like. Um, some of their design features of, of their chairs in general. Um, so you'll see here that at the top of the caster stem, um, I don't know if you remember so for some of my old videos, on um, the Performax, there's a, a caster forks uh, stem that goes up through here and then it's open on the top. And I used to have issues with that all the time where I'd have to replace those bearings because they were always rusting out because it was I'd lose the plastic caps that were on the top. So I like uh, Tylite's design in that it's enclosed there's no, there's no open, so like rainwater and dirt and salt and sand can't get in there. This is all enclosed and sealed. So I have had a, I've had a lot less trouble with those specific stem or uh, caster bearings going out, caster fork bearings. And then also the other thing, and um, I'll get into this a little bit deeper on a, a like in-depth maintenance video, um, but their spacers that they have on the casters uh, are designed a little bit different. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll show you sometime. It definitely makes cleaning the gunk off or reassembling after you clean gunk off your casters way easier and a lot less frustrating. So I'll get into that a little bit deeper on a different video. Uh, so stay tuned and, and subscribe so you can see those maintenance videos coming up soon. Um, the other thing that I did differently on this chair is so I did go, I used to push 26 inch wheels um, and I actually went down to a 25. It's a little bit smaller. It makes me overall maybe an inch shorter in the chair but with me getting in and out of in and out of the car on my own so much a smaller wheel and a smaller footprint was important to me so i went to a smaller wheel and then i also used to push a 26 inch spinner or excuse me not 26 uh 24 spoke spinnergies wow I'll say that times fast uh and admittedly with the extra spokes it was like when I take my chair apart to get it in the car, I reach through the side like this and then I push the button to pull the wheel off. And when there's more spokes there, that can be harder to get your hand in. Uh, so going down to the 12 spoke uh, helps out a lot with that and the ease again and less frustration. Um, so these spokes, there's less of them, they're a little bit thicker, um, but I haven't had any issues with uh, integrity of the wheel or anything like that. Um, and I think they might be a little bit lighter, but don't quote me on that. Um, I did get coated hand rims here because uh, in the winter here when I'm wearing gloves and my hand rims get wet from snow or rain, uh, I was having some trouble slipping and I knew that if I couldn't be on the tires anymore, I was gonna have, um, wanted to have some extra grip. So this is the one thing that I would probably do different or, or and I'm probably going to um, replace these is because as you can see, the, the, the coating on these ones has chipped off and started to tear. Um, and when I don't have gloves on, uh, it hurt. It actually can cut your fingers kind of because it gets a little sharp. And then on top of that too, it didn't really give me the grip that I wanted. So when the plastic gets wet, it's just as slippery as the hand rims were. So there's a couple of different options out there. One of them is, is where it's not like a glossy coating like this, but it's more of like, um, it almost has like sand in it or something like that. So I might try that out for my next set of hand rims. I can probably just order them and put them on these wheels and I won't have to get a whole new set of wheels. So if I ever end up doing that, hopefully in the next couple months, I'll do a video and give you a review on how that goes. But yeah, that would be probably, I love this chair a lot. It's been really, really good to me. Um, but that's probably the one thing that I would change because yeah, you can see on this wheel, it's, it's chunked up quite a bit and then yeah, it's worse on this side. So it's starting to come off here. Um, and it happens more and more every time. Plus these two, I've noticed when I go down a hill and I'm trying to break, they heat up to the point where like, it burns my hands sometimes too. So I'll have to figure that out because that'll be an issue as well with the new ones, but we'll figure it out as we go. So those are kind of the basic parts of the chair. I do have the Rojo again with this. I had a Rojo with my last Performax. Uh, I can't remember if I had the quad 
the quad um, pro one that I have now. So this one has four different um, sections to it that I can lock in the air so that it doesn't move. Um, or I can open it up so that the air flows freely between all four quadrants. Um, but it's super comfortable um, and I really like it. And the nice thing too is that Permobile, the company that owns Tylight, also owns Rojo now. So instead of sometimes when you order a chair and you get a cushion, it comes separately and you gotta deal with all this stuff, it's all it all came all together, pre-assembled, and it was great. So um, if you guys have any questions or any of the things that I mentioned today, drop uh, the questions in the comments or shoot me a message. I'd be more than happy to tell you more, more about the chair in, in depth. Um, otherwise, subscribe and we'll see you on the next Adapted Adventures.